Our investigative team has been looking into how COVID-19 traveled from animals to humans. Here's one possible way. It's called a pangolin. It's a mammal, it's covered in scales, and has a long tongue to search for bugs to eat. Think of a scaly anteater. This creature is not easy to find. It lives in remote areas of Africa and Asia, and not something most people would think may be at the center of this COVID crisis. You see, pangolin meat is a delicacy in some cultures. Its scales are considered to have medicinal qualities. So poachers slaughter and ship these animals to markets around Asia. Some scientists now believe smugglers carrying a sick pangolin may have helped trigger this worldwide COVID-19 pandemic. As we were working on the story, we came across a filmmaker who had spent years tracking down the pangolin in the wild. Imagine a jungle forest with a river going through it, kind of like Amazon. And then along the river in various trees, this is where the pangolins are hanging out. I'm Katie Schuler. I'm a wildlife conservation filmmaker. A lot of the times my work tends to focus on the lesser known animals, the ones that don't get made into stuffed animals, um, the, the species that are kind of overlooked and the underdogs, you know, the creepy crawlies and, and things that are, the more bizarre it is, the more interested I am in it. Several years ago, no one was talking about pangolins and we had just started to hear that they were the world's most trafficked mammal. It's very docile and shy and it rolls up into this protective ball when it's scared, which unfortunately makes it this perfect little package. It almost packages itself <laughs> to then be trafficked around the world for the illegal market. That defense mechanism worked really well for all other uh, predators except for us. Penguins, on the whole, are really hard to see in the wild. They're solitary animals, uh, they're well hidden. We had several different expeditions that all ended in failure. So I wouldn't see my very first wild pangolin for another five years of, of working on this animal. There is a hunter there that is called the Master Pangolin Hunter. His name is Conan. And he is better than anyone else at finding and catching pangolin. We basically get in our inflatable kayaks, we head down the river. When a pangolin is in one of these trees eating ants, the ants are actually giving off this formic acid and that gives off a smell that Conan has learned how to sense. He's also listening for a very specific rustling sound that only the pangolins make. He'll spot a pangolin and then that's the easy part. <laughs> From there, we have to gingerly dismount the, uh, you know, the teetering floating kayak um, into the water essentially and try to find some kind of vine or floating vegetation that you can kind of stand on. The moment I saw my first wild pangolin, I didn't really have time to sit there and think about how incredible it was because I was getting stung by uh, ants and flies and trying to get the shot. It was beautiful to get to see it doing its thing, eating ants in the tree because everything leading up to that point was seeing a pangolin as it was being butchered or smuggled or frozen and dead or decomposing, or maybe it was just a bag of scales or body parts. And so this was finally after five years getting to see this animal exactly how it's supposed to be in the wild, eating ants. So that was really beautiful. You know, I'll probably work on pangolins the rest of my life. I love those scaly bastards and they, uh, they're going to be a part of my work probably the rest of my life. Those pangolin scales, by the way, are made of keratin, the same thing that our nails are made out of, that our hair is made out of. Now, Katie and her team, they're working on a new film about that pangolin that they found because so little is known about these odd creatures. If you're interested in this or any of our investigations, reach out to us on Facebook, on Twitter, or go to NBCBayArea.com slash investigations.